Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I want to talk to you about validating yourself through others. And I want to first start by talking about Tony Robbins's or the thing that he sort of created which is around the six human needs. And just to run through them briefly, I've spoken about this before and I'll put a link to both what he's talked about and what I've spoken about on the subject so that you can listen a little bit more if you're interested. But just to run through them briefly, there's the need for consistency, um, a need to wake up tomorrow, to know that you have everything that you need to survive, um, a need you know, to ensure your own survival. And then we have a need for variety a need for things in life to change, to inspire growth in us, things to challenge us so that we can feel like we're alive. Then we have the need for connection, to belong, to feel loved, to feel part of something, to feel part of a community. And fourthly, we have a need to stand out, a need to feel special, to feel unique. Now, those four human needs I see as our basic human needs. And the first two human needs are in direct opposition. So for consistency and variety, there needs to be a balance to have both right in your life. And the second two human needs are the same. The need for belonging, for connection, and the need to stand out. Again, they're in opposition and we need to learn to balance them. But what I'm talking about, oh, and then the last two human needs are the, the need to grow as a human being, the need to expand our awareness, our understanding of things, and lastly, the human need to add value, to feel like we're worthwhile, that we have something in us to give back to whatever it happens to be. But today, what I'm talking about is that need that we have to feel that we are valuable, to feel that we are worthwhile. And quite often, when we have this need, we look to others to verify that we are of worth, the problem with this is that those that we look to to verify that have all sorts of stuff going on in their own lives. So, for instance, for me, I know that a big driving force in my life was to be feel like my father thought that I was worthwhile. And yet my father was so consumed in his own life that quite often I don't think he even noticed that I was there. So having this need for him to validate me as a person, to make me feel like who I was was worth something, is something that I struggled with for a lot of my life. And it caused me to, to accept things that otherwise I most likely wouldn't have. And this is not blaming my father. He was unaware of the consequences of his actions. I was unaware at the time as well. It's just how life is sometimes. And I'm sharing this because when we seek validation from somebody else, somebody else who isn't whole themselves, that has their own issues and their own stuff in their life, it can be very damaging to ourselves. For me, it meant that I accepted relationships um, into my life where I wasn't really valued because it was a reflection of what I was seeking. Because, as you know, <laughs> if any of you have listened to me or are spiritual or any way self-aware, that what is going on inside of you is what is reflected outside in the world beyond you. So for me, because I felt that I wasn't validated by my father, I then sought relationships where I wasn't validated either. Um, it's very easy for me to see all this now in hindsight, now that I know more, but that for me is also one of the reasons why self-awareness is so incredibly important. Because until we are aware, you can't do anything about those things. So for me, if I hadn't become more aware, I would have repeated those same things over and over again, convincing myself that what I saw reflected in my father's response to me was the truth. And it's not the truth. Because the truth is that I am a unique and whole and wondrous person, just like you are, just like everyone is in this, on this planet. But I don't need somebody else to validate that for me. It was for me to realise that myself. Um, I've actually created a meditation and it's something that I'm very passionate about, is helping people 
to go within to be able to see the truth of who they really are, that they're eternal beings here having a human experience. But when you are able to truly see that and appreciate that, then you're able to step back and those things that hurt so much before, those things that coloured your whole life and caused you to react and do things that looking back you're not so sure about, those things you get distance from them. And when you get distance from them, you start to see that they aren't really you. That all they are is a set of circumstances that led you to believe something that wasn't true. Other ways that we seek validation from others are in competition. So anyone who is very, very competitive, they're seeking to be validated through winning. And yet the exhaustion of that, I mean, I'm just thinking about it now, and the fear that goes with that, because even if you do attain whatever it is you're chasing, as you get older, the ability to maintain that gets harder and harder. Even though there are some people who are advanced in years and are quite amazing. But my belief is the more you fear that you won't be able to maintain it, the more likely you are not to be able to maintain it. So anyone who is incredibly competitive, that is a drive to seek validation of who you are as a person. Anyone at work who um, looks to superiors and tries to gain their attention and tries to gain their approval is also a seek for someone, you know, verifying that they are whatever it is that they think they want to be. So we can seek it from all sorts of people. We can seek it from friends in, you know, groups of people. When you strive to get noticed, to get people to like you, to admire you, that again is seeking validation outside of yourself for who you are and what you are and that you are worthwhile as a human being. But none of those people can truly give that to you because as I've said, they're all going through their own things and your behaviour might not match with what they like. It doesn't mean you're wrong and that you do not have value. It just means that they don't particularly resonate with that. And sometimes when that happens, it can be crushing. It can be devastating to feel that somebody is rejecting you for who you are. And the only reason that it's crushing is because you think that their opinion of you matters. You've given them more importance in your life than they deserve because the only person's opinion of you is your own. And as long as you become the person you want to be, that is all that matters. So it is far more important to spend time and thinking about who you want to be as a person, the impact you want to make on the world, what you want your life to be about, than it is to ask someone else's opinion of who they think you should be. This is a topic I could go on about for a very long time, but I hope that it's kind of whetted your appetite. I hope it's made you think and realise that you are valuable and you are worthwhile, no matter what anyone says or does. Because the fact that you're here on this earth, on this planet, means that you have value, that your life has value, that who you are has value. As I've said, I'm going to put links below in the show notes to all the things I've spoken about. Um, also, if you want to contact me for coaching or any of my online courses, those links will be below. And I'm also doing a once monthly Ho'oponopono clearing. And I'll put a link to the video on Ho'oponopono if you don't know about it and you're curious and want to know more, as well as a link to the monthly sessions should you want to join me. Have a fabulous week. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.